Hey, hey everyone, my name is Ted Simpson. Let's do a great painting today. All right, I have a canvas set up here. It's an older canvas. I think I've uh, scraped and wiped it a couple of times, but we're gonna go ahead and use it one more time. See if we can get a nice example painting going here for you. It's a 12 by 16 canvas. I've got my liquid white and a two inch brush. I dip the brush in get a little color on there, just getting it off onto the canvas. You can dab it, you can wipe it, whatever. And we just want to cover the whole thing. Now Bob only had himself 26, 27 minutes sometimes to do an entire painting, so we often skip this step. It already had it done for you. So I'm just going to show you here with this lightly already slightly tinted canvas here. This this liquid white shows up very, very much more. <laughs> All right, I can see I'm, I'm a little rusty with my presentation. Sorry about that. Maybe I should just go with uh, a voiceover instead. Just paint silently and voiceover, what do you think? Well, it does have its advantages. Touch, just get a little bit of paint up on the fingers there. If you think you have too much, just wipe it off with a, with a napkin or a paper towel. I'm gonna clean this brush out, just sort of scrub the excess out. Now, of course, I have no paint on my palette. But through the magic of editing, we'll get some on there.
We've got our palette. Look at all these colors. That took me hours to put out there. But, thanks to editing, we're ready to go now. So, let's, uh, let's start this off. Now that we've got that, that clean bit of liquid white on there, let's just put in a, a simple little sky. And I'm going to use that same brushed out two inch brush here. Just gonna pick up a little bit of that phthalo blue, work it into the brush a little bit. And let's just put in a, a little a little something there. Just just some color in the sky and clean out the brush by putting in the water. Look how simple that is. Dropping in some color. The more you go over it, the softer it gets. If you want it a little bolder, you just tap into some more color. Bring that across, get, get some water in there. And then you can gently go back and forth with whatever color is up there. Little crisscross strokes. We can just move and blend this sky, not worrying so much about the, the, the right side there. Just get something interesting going in the sky. The more you work it, the softer everything gets. Sometimes, you know, if you have a little too much liquid white, you stir too much, things start to get a little a little soupy up there. So you can just wipe off the excess paint as you need to and, and get this as soft as you like. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is use the same color, but this time I'm tapping into a little bit of paint. Getting some color down, tapping it in. It's the same color, just a little bit darker. And what I'm going to do is try to create just this rolling cloud that's, that's taking up a good portion of the sky. Tapping it in. Give it a little stir here on the bottom. And it's just filling in the rest of the sky while blending a little bit of that cloud down. We're going to come back here and soften this up with a clean dry brush. And through the magic of having another brush, I can go ahead and soften this a little bit, working the, the back end here, the, the, the smoothest bit of the cloud, the lightest bit of the cloud. I think here in this episode, Bob used the, the blender brush for this. He's right, it is, it is difficult to get a softer look here with this two inch brush. We're gonna give it a try. Every once in a while I, I just knock the excess paint out of the brush go over it a couple of times here, just starting in the bit that you want light first. You are going to pick up a little color and sometimes transfer it. That's okay. We just blend and soften as we go. And maybe drop in a, a little second one here. See how it's nice and dark and it stands out next to that uh, faded bit of the first cloud form. Same color, just a little bit darker than the sky. Come back to my dry brush, and I can stir in little taps, and blend some of this down and out of the way. The more you go over it, the more it'll mix with the liquid white, and the softer it gets. And come back here and I like that super soft look. Let's go over it. Oh boy. Very, very lightly and you can calm this down. If you push too hard, you'll create like, look like it's raining up. So, try not to do it too hard. Crisscross strokes calms everything down. Look at that. We can just keep blending and blending and blending. Let me adjust that light a little bit. 
There we go. Now you can see that a little closer. A little easier. A little brighter, I guess I should say. Something like that. Now, let's, let's make our kooky mountain today. And to do that, Oh, I think Bob had like a little, a little baby mountain behind everything. So I'm going to take a, a little bit of black and Prussian blue. Maybe a touch more black. Fairest hint of alizarin crimson. And then a little bit of white. The lighter things are in the background here the further away they're going to look. So, with a little bit of that, that paint on the knife, let's make a, oh, just a little interesting shape back here. All I'm really concerned about is the, the outer edge, the, the border. That's the B word I was looking for. Just a little border that looks kind of Kind of like a little mountain ridge off in the back there. It's a little tough to do with a big knife on, a, on a, making a small form there. Well, you can do it. And then I'm going to use my ooh, brush here. I haven't been used in a while. So let's pull some of that color. Just pushing the brush in and drawing it out. Just moving it a little bit here and there. Look at that. Little cloud way, or a little cloud, a little mountain way off in the distance. Boy, that voiceover is sounding better and better, isn't it? Now let's make up a darker color. Take a little bit of crimson, a little bit of the midnight black, and just a touch of the blue, maybe a touch of brown. Making our own mountain mixture today. We want it to have a little lavender look to it. Let's uh, throw a little bit of that alizarin crimson in there. And if it's a little much, you can always adjust it. I like to go through here and mix that color up pretty well. It's kind of a, a purpley color and I like to dull it down. So I'll add a touch of brown to it. Get off a nice roll of paint, that might be a little too much. <laughs> there we go. So, let us make a mountain shape. Same thing, just focusing on an outer border here. Sort of pushing that paint in, getting that paint off the knife, and then scraping and, and removing most of it. Okay? Maybe another little bump or a lump right here. I think it kind of mirrors that one just a little bit. You can go with that or you can change it. Just focusing on the, the outer edge there. And over here, we're going to have a little projection here. Need a little darker, push some paint on. Push that paint on. some away and use that to 
make some more. Make some more border. Push that paint on, move it, slide it, scrape it, slap it, adjective, adverb, whatever you got to do to make an interesting shape here. And then take your brush, pull it down, and fill in the stuff down here. You're just pull it and then wipe it. This little bit, let's draw this out, creating the body of the mountain, moving color. There's always this little Bermuda Triangle, I call it, of unfilled in mountain. And you just have to, you got to go back and, and fill it in just one direction or the other, you know? Pulling it down, wiping the excess paint out of the brush, which creates the rest of the mountain. Pretty simple. And look at all these shapes that we got going on. We don't have to highlight it all if we don't want to. It, it uh, You got the basic angles there. It looks pretty good either way. But in this painting today, we are going to go ahead and highlight. It's up to you whether you want to follow along with me or do your own thing. So, if you're going to follow along with me, I'm going to I'm going to make this a little bit a little bit grayer. I'm going to take a little bit of a midnight black. Ooh, I had a touch of Prussian blue in there too. Not going to hurt it too much. Midnight black and white will create a grayish tone. And of course, you can do whatever you want. You can use this pure white if you want. You can use all the brown tones. Gives it a, a southwestern feel. This time here, I'm going to take my knife and just graze it down into the left. Just feeling that paint touch the canvas and drag downwards. See that? No pressure. <laughs> you know Bob says that all the time. Come up here. That. Just follow the basic angles that you already created with your brush strokes. And graze the knife. Let that paint slip and just slide off wherever it wants here. Not trying to push in or force it. Just grazing it. Let that paint just come off. Doesn't really, you can't really drag it. You don't want to scrape it. You can just gently move in that direction, and it'll, it'll take some of that paint and fill in those little cracks and crevices and create some, some effects there. And you can do as much of this as you want. Bob, in this particular mountain here, we just sort of went beep, beep. Let's see. New roll of paint, there we go. And he just created this, this little ridge moving off one direction here. And then filled some of it in just by adding a little bit to the knife and drawing in the proper angle. Look at that. We just fill some of that in, building our shape. And then I tell you what, let's come back here. Let's create a little, a little shadow color over on this side here. Shadow color here, a little bit of crimson, Prussian blue. Maybe a touch of dark sienna brown. This, I'm going to try to leave a little marbled, okay? Don't really want to mix it too much. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Maybe a touch more of the brown and a little dark sienna here and there. And 
let's cut it off. And just create a little bit of stuff back here. A little bit of shadow sneaking through. Pulling down and away. Anywhere you want, you can drop a little bit of this color in. But I would highly recommend not covering it all up. Leave some of that dark. Okay. Over on this side, there's a there's a little bit you can you can sneak a little shadow in there. Any of these spots you want, you can drop them in with a little shadow. Any of these extra dark spots you have, you can even if you don't really have dark spots, well, you can put some in. I come back to my my original background color here. And you can change it up if you want. If it's too dark, you don't like it, lighten it up with a little bit of your shadow. Or just stick it extra dark in there. And I'm just going to pull a little bit sideways, dropping, dropping that in. You can already see, just by that change of angle there, it creates a, a, a little dark gap there. And it creates that projected look to it. Pretty sweet. And sometimes I'll use that, that small edge of the, the knife there. That way you can really pinpoint a couple of spots if, if you think it needs it. Changing the angle just a little bit gives you a nice effect instantly. Something like that. If it's a little too strong, you can fiddle with it for ages and just, just sort of rub it and calm it down a little bit. But take a couple steps back before you do that. It'll sort of sort of assess before you mess with it too much. Now, I don't think Bob did this in, in this particular episode, but it's something that I like to do occasionally. Or Bob will take a little bit brighter color, almost pure white, and just a couple of spots here. He'll graze some highlights to the highlight. You can definitely overdo this. So you find some spots here, just a few, where you think are catching the light. Maybe I'm overdoing it now. Maybe some of you were like, stop. You might be right. Just those little, little sun-kissed spots. That I think look pretty cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm going overboard now. And even a little bit of a lighter shadow color. You can you can create some little little things as well. You put in some extra darks. Might as well put in a couple of extra lights. You know, add something here and there. You don't really know what what's reflecting here and there. And then. Have another clean brush. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. I think they're both kind of dirty. So, quick flash, and I'll uh, I'll create my little beater bucket. I told you I didn't really, really think too much about this. I watched an episode. I'm like, ah, I want to try that one. I've never done that particular episode before.
clean dry brush. Just going to create a, a little bit of mist here. Tapping and sweeping just a little bit. Try to follow the angles. Sometimes if I make streaks following the angles, I will hit it at a slightly different angle just to, to blur, just to blur that uh, mist a little bit. Over here, create a little mist in the shadow area, just, just watching my watching my brush. I don't want to accidentally tap into that. Very gentle, just a just a whisper touch. One more for good luck. I think here I'm going to come back and add a little bit of brown, dark sienna, touch of white to lighten it up. This brown, brownish, purplish touch of the green, and I, 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 I figure out what color looks good by, by mixing right here on the brush. Just tapping, get an interesting little color there. And let's see how we do. I'm tapping just to actually remove some of the excess paint. My pile kind of grows here. I just don't want to add, you know, too much too soon. So just taking a little bit of this color, tapping, and we'll adjust. If I need to add a little more color, I can do that. Tap, and then I'm just flicking upwards, lifting, creating some tree line there, a little bit of trees poking up here and there. Put the color on, try to flick straight up. Okay, there's some stuff there in the back. As we move forward it gets just a, a little more visible. So with my browns and my purples and my green a little less white as we start to come forward. I can create all these little foothills here with the with the one inch brush and lift up the tops of them to, to create all the trees, all the little toppers. Flick, flick, flick. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. What I want to do there is destroy or create a little bit of mist. So I'm going to tap with this clean, dry, two-inch brush just the, the bottom parts of this foothill. See how it fills in the body of the foothill with mist? And you start to see the shape come out. Okay, and we can change this up. We can, if you tap too much, create too much mist, well, we can just go back and tap in another little lump or a bump. Flick upwards. And then tap and create mist again. And we're just bringing, bringing things forward here. Creating the illusion here of, of little footy hills, little the shapes of the land, what Bob would call the, the lay of the land. Okay, little, little bumps. You can see just using a little bit more paint creates the foothill. Flick up. And then tap the very base of it to create the misty layer. You can, you can bring this as far forward as you want, create all these different shapes, but I think we'll, we'll hold off there, and I'm going to actually use the fan brush here, 
create a little bit of a darker mix of my purples, greens, maybe a touch of black. And we're going to create this little, little thing here just by pressing, putting a little color out there, and then flicking up sort of stands out a little bit from the rest of the pack. There we go. Now, I think we can, we can jump forward into the scene a little bit, and I'm going to use a little bit of this dark color, create one last little dark thing here. Down. All right. Let's mix up some more dark stuff. So any of this stuff here that I had light in it, just gonna just gonna get rid of it. Let's mix up a dark pile here. We'll go ahead and ooh, we'll start out with a lot of crimson, uh, a good lump of Prussian blue. Black, brown, dark sienna, green. Look at all that color. So, hopefully, the crimson and Prussian blue make a nice dark plum purple. The black darkens it. The brown and the dark sienna dull it. The green tints it. All those colors working together. And what does it get us? A blackish color with a hint of green. Okay, if you're unsure, I take a little bit of white and my color. Let's mix it. Look at that. It's sort of a dark olive looking black. I love it. And we'll use our handy dandy fan brush. Let's create some, some shadowed evergreens, some things off in the distance there. Not a lot of detail. Right up on this little hill that we created. And these will be downward facing trees, so I'm just tapping, bending the bristles, building this tree out. Just making a basic shape. Give him, a, give him a buddy. This brush that I'm using is a little bit frayed. Gives a different look than if I used like a brand new brush. This one gives me a lot more of those little hangy down things. A little rougher. And a couple more here. Just a silhouette of some, some evergreens way back, way back where, you know? Kind of like this dark color here. Let's darken this, this hill a little. Now, we might as well use a different fan brush. I've got, a, I've got a few of them, so why not? Let's create our highlight color. I'm going to use a little bit of, ooh, that was a lot of it, a little bit of liquid white, cad yellow, maybe a touch of the, the Indian yellow as well, and a little bit of the green. Go back and forth, mixing these colors together. A little more to taste. Gotta to, got to flavor it. Maybe a touch of the yellow ochre. Who knows? I'm going to create a little bit of, of highlight on this grass back here. Just tapping. Get me 
gave it a little bit more, there it is, a little bit more of the green. Tap, tap, tap. The more you tap, the more it mixes with that under color, and it will get darker and darker. The more you tap it, the more it blends. Makes sense, right? You can see up here where I didn't tap as much, it stays that brighter yellow color. But if I want to, I can create a, a couple little bright spots. Sort of highlighting the highlight once again. Something like that. And you can bring this out. Oh, well, we can make this, this hill look all the way in front. Just by tapping a little further forward. There we go. Now what I'm going to do here is take... I have that brush here with some of that dirty brown color in it. I'm actually going to just take that, that, that uh, color that's already there and add some reflection here. Okay. With the clean dry brush, I go over it sideways. Look at that, just putting a little glow, a little glow of reflections in the water there. Okay, if you wanted it a little, a little more bold, see that? You can create more reflections and you just do the same thing. Try not to blend so much and the color will remain a little darker. Keep going over it. It keeps mixing with the liquid white, and it will just keep getting lighter and lighter. Touch of the titanium white here, and a little bit of liquid white. Just sort of mash together, mash and smash. Tiny bit. This this little water line is really really far away. So we don't really need a lot here. This is a, an exercise in subtlety. <laughs> if you can manage it, try to make, make just a little water line, little, little ripples back there. Don't need too much. If it gets a little too bright for you, just keep rubbing. It'll mix in with some of that uh, reflection color. Get it down to whatever degree of softness, or darkness, or lightness that you like. Look at that. We got something going here, don't we? Now, Bob did this whole painting in an oval, so some of this might get uh, cut off or just won't look as uh, the same, obviously. But let's jump in and add some more evergreens. I'm just acting silly already. I just love this painting. can't believe I've never done this episode before. And let's drop a, a bigger tree right up, right up there. Notice when I come down lower, it will look closer automatically. This tree here, oh, it's... It's, it's seen a couple of days, that's for sure. It's a big one. Tapping, working my way out. Loading this brush from the pile and smoothing it. As I need to here to keep this tree nice and dark. I think we'll just let this tree come on down a little closer to us. Ooh, I like that.
these ones here. You can just make this tree in the background. You don't even have to do the whole thing. Just tap, let some of it come down, and the mind will fill in the rest when we do the highlights, you know? And sometimes I, I change it, put a little different top on it. There we go. Well, those two trees are almost the same, aren't they? Well, maybe we'll, we'll stick a little guy back here that's a different height altogether. It's really close to the edge, so doesn't really need a lot of detail around the side, so <laughs> I think that'll, that'll just about do it. Over on this side, oh golly. I think we'll just, uh, just let that sit for a bit. <laughs> uh, taking my knife, let's create a little stalk right up, right up on the top there. Add a couple little sticks and twiggers. And now, I will come back here with my highlight brush and I'll come in here with a little bit more of the green. I want to dull this down a little bit. A touch of bright red will help dull things down. Ooh, there you go. And I think we'll just tap, 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 tap create some basic shapes here to highlight the tree. Some of the tree, not all of it. This little guy up here. Making sure to come across the center there. background tree is going to get a little, doo -doo -doo -doo. he's just off in the background just to give him a, a little indication of the sunlight hitting a couple spots. There we go. Okay, where are we at? We want to see a little bit of this, this river lake, a little body of water working its way forward here. So let's give the, the land a little bit of body to it. Let's figure out where this water is going to flow around here. We can create oh let's just see something like that. Something a little flatter. And then we'll turn some of it into reflection. There we go. Come back here with the old big brush and soften it. And let's see, where is that highlight brush? There it is. Let's create, oh, we got to have a couple little bush things in there. So, I will use my one inch brush, dunk it into a little bit of that liquid white. Notice here I'm just pulling down and pulling away. Pull and pop up. Getting lots of paint worked up right there on the tips of the bristles. And then, touch. Lightest of touches here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Creating a little indication of some bushes. If I change up the color a little bit, we can add different layers here. So I'm, I'm actually mixing a little bit of the yellow ochre and the bright red. <laughs> Working that color in there and creating a, a second little line of bushes behind the first one. 
Or I guess that would be in front of the first one, right? Something like that. And we got a little bit of that lawn grass. I think that'll help tie the, the back meadow here in with the front here. So I tap a little bit of this color. We can create a little bit of this grass. Just sneaking up. Underneath these bushes. I'm going to come back here with a little bit of the browns, a little bit of dark sienna and Van Dyke brown. I'm going to cut off a little roll of paint. And let's put just a little bit of, a little bit of earth under this. And then I'll take a touch of the white. There we go. And lighten it up a little bit so that I can graze just a little highlight over the top of it. It's a little too dark. You can always give it another pass with a lighter color. Just a little indication here and there. There it is. A little bit of lighter stuff. What I like to do is put a little bit of that grass over the grass side of, of the highlights here. Put a little bit of that over the ground. It makes it look like the ground is underneath, which it should look right there it is and then we'll come back with our waterline nice I do like occasionally having it sort of stick out a little almost like little fingers just to me I really like that look okay so now we could we could end this right here we got a little bit of uh, the sunlight just glinting off that but we can also oh no you want to oh what should I do I think we could add one here. How about just one? Let's take a one inch brush. Let's go into our, our dark color here, our browns and, and blues and blacks, touch of the greens, just all this dark color. here and see what the deal is with the dog. Pause.
Okay, well, I took care of that. The dog was barking at nothing, of course. And let's go ahead and, oh, look at this tree starting to form here. All these different little, little hang downs here. Something like that. I know, this, this tree, I want to see more of it, but that's all we're going to see today. Let's create some, some trunk there. We've got trees got to, trees got to grow out of something. So, just touching and pulling the knife sideways. And if you need to, you can always clean up the left side by turning the knife upside down. And start working it up. Little rolls of paint. Maybe we got a little branch coming off. Smaller rolls of paint. Smaller branches. Look at that. Oh, I love those little ones there that you can see in between off in the light there. Now we'll use our highlight color, which is just a bit of white and dark sienna and brown. Doesn't really matter as long as it looks interesting. Little light color here. I think the light's going to shine on the left side. So I just touch a couple little spots here. Not, not really thinking, overthinking it, overdoing it, putting some out there. Just so we can see them. Now, of course, the big decision, what color to, to use to highlight it. I think Bob used a, a little bit more of a, a fall color since this was called early autumn. So let's go ahead and, and stick with Bob. Going back and forth here, look at all this fall color we got going on here. This is the yellow ochre and bright red, Indian yellow. It's a nice color. You could even, oh my gosh, drop a touch of dark sienna in it. Maybe we'll see some of it, maybe not. But, but, lots of paint up in the brush here. And I'm going to create some highlights, working my way down this tree, creating these, these little clumps, leaving some dark, coming across the trunk. We don't want to just go around the trunk. We want to see some of these highlights all over the place here. Look at that. Ooh, that one turned out okay. And down at the bottom here, I think, I think we can get away with putting a little land, just sort of mashing some dark color here. And then with a little bit of the, the yellow and green, Just, just mashing a little bit of foliage in front. Something like that. Okay, you can always pick out a, a bright thing here and there. There we go. Some interesting little thingies there. And we'll scratch in a couple of little sticks and twigs. That's one of the reasons why we leave those dark spots. They're important. The way if we just cut right through the paint, it looks like little branches here and there. Not too shabby. Then again, I don't like it. 
So to actually to scratch that away, I thought it was a little too sloppy. So I scratch away the excess paint, come back with my dark color, and let's let's put a, an actual little bush under there. And then just so that it matches up a little bit more of that lawn grass. Let's see how that looks instead. So I just tap a little bit of that dark color there. I do like having these little little stringies up there, so we can we can keep a couple of those. A little bit of dark color. All right. Now let's come back and, and create a highlight to those bushes again. A little bit more of the, the liquid white. And going back to the yellow colors. That's a little duller, but still looks nice. And let's create a, oh, that's just what we needed. That's it, right there. A little bit of highlights. Under there. Now I can come back with this, the sap green, yellows, and let's create that, that lawn look under here. This is, this is going to be a little duller at first, tapping some in. And then, if we want to highlight a little, I'll come back with a slightly lighter color. Let's blend that to create a different little look there. The more you tap it, the more it will mix, and eventually you start to make mud. So we try not to overwork it. Put that on there, and I think that ties in a little bit better now, having a, having a touch of bushes of the same color back here, the lawn, last little bit of green there, and then it's everything starting to dull out. Touch this here, adding some different, different little flavors in there, and come back with my knife, scratch in a couple more sticks and twigs. There it is. I like that. So with a liner brush, I'll sign this painting, <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my website. Come take a class with me. Take care, all. Bye.